Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So we learned that today, Jeffrey Epstein's co-conspirator, Ghislaine Maxwell, has been arrested and she'll have her first court appearance later today. This immediately conjures up two questions. Why now and what's next? First of all, who is Ms. Maxwell? Well, she is a longtime friend, associate, and we now know co-conspirator of Jeffrey Epstein in his sex trafficking ring um, for which he was charged before, um, before he died. And here's what NBC News said earlier today about Miss Maxwell's role in the Jeffrey Epstein sex trafficking ring. They said, quote, Miss Maxwell either recruited them, meaning Jeffrey Epstein's young victims, either recruited them directly or provided logistical support like scheduling visits to Epstein's home. The article goes on to say that Ms. Maxwell emerged as the accused sexual predator's chief enabler, as Jeffrey Epstein's chief enabler. That is just a little bit of who Ms. Maxwell is and how she fits in to the Jeffrey Epstein sex trafficking conspiracy. So I have heard a question often asked in recent months We've seen pictures of Miss Maxwell, you know, sitting uh, at street, street cafes, sipping lattes. Why wasn't she arrested sooner? There are a couple of possibilities. One, perhaps the FBI, the federal prosecutors in New York didn't have enough evidence to arrest her sooner. That seems unlikely given even the public reporting of her apparent role in the Jeffrey Epstein conspiracy. The other possibility is that she was working all along as a cooperating witness, or the prosecutors in the Southern District of New York, put a pin in that, we're gonna come back to it. The SDNY prosecutors were perhaps trying to negotiate a cooperation agreement with Ms. Maxwell and her lawyers, and that's why they weren't arresting her. Let me take a step back and tell you that as a former 30-year prosecutor, I brought on board probably more cooperating witnesses than most prosecutors. One of the things that we would do, not infrequently, when we were investigating conspiracy cases, is we would decide to leave a smaller fish on the street rather than lock them up if we knew that smaller fish in the conspiracy could give us bigger and bigger fish, both inside the conspiracy and outside the conspiracy. And it sure seems like Miss Maxwell can give up any number of potentially rich, influential, connected men who might have been part of the conspiracy or partaking of what Jeffrey Epstein was offering. So it may be that she was out and about and not under arrest previously because the government was either working with her as a cooperator who was still on the street, so to speak, or trying to negotiate a deal with her. And maybe that negotiation broke down and the federal prosecutors finally decided that they had to arrest her as a way to put pressure on her to leverage the criminal case to try to convince her to cooperate. We have a saying, pressure bursts pipes. And I don't mean that in a an improper way or a heavy-handed way, but the balance of power tends to change once you take somebody into custody, somebody that you had hoped to develop as a cooperating witness. So now she's in custody and the prosecutors will have to decide whether they want to ask the judge to detain her, jail her pending trial, or put her on release in the community, put her on perhaps an ankle bracelet, GPS monitoring. Um, it does seem like there will be a strong argument that Ms. Maxwell is a flight risk. I can't say because I'm not privy to the evidence whether there's evidence that she would also present a danger to the community or a danger to her and Epstein's many, many, many female victims, all of whom have been deprived of justice for so long now. But the prosecutors will have to decide later today whether they want to seek her detention or let her remain in the community. Here are the two wild cards when it comes to Miss Maxwell's circumstances and what may happen next. 
Bill Barr, and a presidential pardon from Donald Trump. Let's unravel those a little bit. Bill Barr, you'll recall, not a week ago, engaged in this flurry of nefarious activity to fire Jeff Berman, the top prosecutor, the U.S. attorney in the Southern District of New York U.S. Attorney's Office, the office that is prosecuting Ms. Maxwell. We don't really know why Bill Barr did that, but we know how ugly it was because remember first, Bill Barr tried to promote Jeff Berman to either be the chief of the civil division for the entire Department of Justice or the chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC. Berman said, I don't want those jobs. Next thing you know, uh, Bill Barr issues his own attempted Friday Night Massacre press release telling everybody Jeff Berman has resigned. And Jeff Berman promptly issues his own press release. No, I haven't. I haven't resigned. I didn't tell the attorney general I was resigning. I don't intend to resign. So because Bill Barr was caught in that lie, the next thing you know, Bill Barr says, well, if he hasn't resigned, I just told the president to fire him. How ugly was that? How desperate was Bill Barr to dislodge the U.S. attorney from the Southern District of New York? The office that one week later arrested Jeffrey Epstein's co-conspirator, Miss Maxwell. I don't know if those two things are connected, but there is sure a whole lot of investigating to be done on that front. So Bill Barr miscalculated though, because Bill Barr tried to install somebody after he had the president fire Jeff Berman, who he thought perhaps would do his bidding and it didn't work. Instead, the number two person, the deputy to Jeff Berman is now heading up the U.S. Attorney's Office. Assistant U.S. Attorney Strauss is her name, and she is a hard-charging, honest, ethical career prosecutor who has now, we know, brought charges against Ms. Maxwell. So I say that maybe Bill Barr was trying to install somebody because this indictment against Ms. Maxwell was imminent, because I think back to what Bill Barr did at the DC U.S. Attorney's Office when he yanked out my former U.S. Attorney and colleague Jesse Liu from the top prosecutor spot, the U.S. Attorney in D.C., and installed a lackey named Tim Shea, Bill Barr's lackey, who promptly went about you know, doing favors, though, for Roger Stone and trying to dismiss Mike Flynn's case and doing all this unjust, nefarious bidding for Bill Barr and the president. Kind of smells like maybe Bill Barr was trying to do that in the Southern District of New York and it didn't work. I don't know, but there are certainly some strong parallels. So what happens now? Does Ms. Maxwell hope that Bill Barr will do her a favor, though, the way he did for Roger Stone and Mike Flynn and other friends of the president? We don't know. Does Ms. Maxwell hope that Donald Trump might pardon her? Is she angling for a pardon? It could be that she was trying to negotiate a cooperation agreement with the prosecutors in New York. That's why she was out sipping lattes at the cafes. And it didn't work and she finally said, you know what, arrest me and I'll angle for a presidential pardon because we all know Donald Trump is not above issuing pardons. We don't know. We don't know what her angle is. We don't know precisely why at this moment the Southern District of New York prosecutors and the FBI working together arrested Miss Maxwell. But I assume we're going to begin to learn about a number of these things in the coming days and weeks. Here's the last thing I'll say. We all know after Jeffrey Epstein was taken into custody, what happened? We don't know precisely what happened, but we know that um, he did not survive to see his own trial or to cooperate with the government and give up all of those powerful, influential men that he could have given up. Miss Maxwell needs to remain safe. And can I tell you folks from my own personal experience dealing with more cooperating witnesses than I can count? Here's how I dealt with the safety issue. 
When I met with a defendant and I tried to convince that defendant to become a cooperating witness, cooperate with the prosecution, and help me bring down other bigger fish by providing truthful, honest, accurate information about those other big fish, I told every person in that circumstance, every aspiring cooperating witness that whether you cooperate with me or not, I'm going to make sure we take all reasonable steps to provide for your safety. I never used safety as a bargaining chit or as leverage over a defendant. Whether they decided to cooperate with me or not, we always tried to protect everyone that we arrested and that was then in the Bureau of Prisons custody or in DC, the Department of Corrections custody. So what I urge is that Ms. Maxwell, regardless of what role she chooses to play in the ongoing investigations and prosecutions, she needs to remain safe. More to come on this front, folks. I wanted to get this quick video out given today's development, and I will be talking with you all again very soon.